Hunt with passion. Never stop casting. Chase the dream. Welcome to Season 3 of Musky Mastery Outdoors. Sponsored by Joe Booker Outdoors. Number one in big game fish products. All right, folks, what's up? And welcome back to another vlog here on the Season 3 of Musky Mastery YouTube channel and show. Believe it or not, guys, it just so kind of uh, times up with Halloween that this is vlog number 13. Very spooky, right? But this is the 13th vlog in the, you know, kind of kind of my instructional series. I did some on the water stuff during the during the uh, you know main part of my summer guiding season, but now we're back in the studio here, and uh, we are about to break things down on the whiteboard. Uh, special thanks to, again to my buddy John Seeger for getting me these uh, these wonderful magnets. I hope you guys love these as much as I do. And I'm listening to your feedback. Y'all said get closer to the whiteboard or get another camera zoomed in on. So I haven't done that yet, but um, we're one step closer. So I have uh, the camera zoomed in on the whiteboard. And today, guys and gals out there, first of all, thank you so much. You know, it's in the beginning of in the you know podcast or vlog. You got to thank your sponsors. You got to thank your your listeners, and that's what I'm doing right now. But right now, we're 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 just going to be specific and say thank you to the viewers. It would be a pretty boring life without you folks out there. So thank you so much for tuning in and watching. I really hope you're enjoying the educational part of musky fishing. It is, of course, my passion as an educator and guide. So today I have a, a very important, what I think, uh, you know, topic here because it's seasonal. I mean, of course, trolling is something that we do all year long. Spring, summer, fall, actually a lot of folks that, that have open water all year long, they'll troll 365 days a year. For me in the North Country, you know, I'm, I'm kind of limited to uh, May through November, but still, we are going to talk about something that uh, as, as we all kind of experience uh, the fall or cooler uh, weather season here, wherever you might be fishing, whether that's uh, Kentucky or Minnesota or Wisconsin or Ohio or Pennsylvania, your water is likely cooling down right now, no matter where you are. And uh, if you're like me, in the, in the late fall period, trolling is something uh, a lot of folks, you can clearly see it in my YouTube videos, I rely on trolling to catch muskies this time of year. So that's what we're talking about today. But we're not just talking about any type of trolling, we're talking about trolling basics, okay? So I hope that if you know how to troll, you don't just tune out here. But I hope that if you aren't very confident in your trolling uh, abilities, that you really get the notebook out, take a few notes, and listen up. Because I'm, and this, and if you want this, if one person comments that they want uh, session two or, or episode two on, on trolling, maybe we'll go into more, you know, in-depth detail on some of these topics that we talked about today, we'll make it a two-part series. But for right now, it's just a one-part series called the you know basics of trolling, whatever I wrote here, trolling basics, and it's season three, episode 13. So here's the goal. I actually write this out for my, my presentations. What's the goal for today? What are you going to get out of this? I mean, that's an important thing to answer, right? So after watching this presentation, you are going to feel more knowledgeable. That's a big thing. Knowledge is power. You're going to feel more confident in applying via either road trolling or motor trolling, which I do most of motor trolling, trolling as a tactic to catch muskies on your home waters. Okay, so we want to catch muskies, we want to do it more consistently. So catching muskies consistently is the goal because they're tough fish to catch, and trolling is a tactic that if you don't do it, or you don't do it very often, now is the time to learn about it. Better late than never. It only takes one step to start a journey. And this may be, for many of you out there, your start to your trolling journey. I hope my video kickstarts a uh, just a wonderful info uh, gleaning frenzy where you're going to be reading, you're going to be looking at various articles and videos, of course. So, you know, a lot of folks ask, I'm just going to start off the, the uh, you know, the, the vlog with this. The first question is this, and I'm not going to really write a lot of things out on the whiteboard for this first part, but why troll? You know, 
that's a really important question because a lot of folks that are out there that maybe don't troll don't do it because they don't know how to do it, which is an important reason maybe not to be doing it because you don't know how to, you're not very confident in the skills. But another reason is maybe because we, we haven't, uh, you know, thought about the, the mentality, the theory, the strategy behind trolling. Why do it? So I came up with a nice little list of reasons why I troll outside of just breaking up the monotony of musky fishing. I mean, when you're casting for 14 plus hours, it's kind of one of those things where, hey, it's fun to do some different things, crack different jokes, talk about different topics, and of course, try different you know techniques, okay? So first of all, the first thing I wrote here in my why troll category was, it is when casting isn't producing results. I would say that the majority of musky anglers out there and I think I'm probably correct on this. The majority, the vast majority of musky anglers between pros and novices and, uh, you know, folks in between there somewhere, most folks are casters primarily. Most folks cast primarily. If you were to ask me, honestly, I'm primarily a caster. Um, but I do troll uh, fairly often, often enough where I'd say I, I am a troller, okay? But uh, most folks cast. And when you're not getting results casting, it begs the question, well, should you try something different? And for those of you who have had a, a, a challenging season, or maybe you've had a couple challenging seasons, and you have to ask yourself, have you only casted? And if that answer is yes, then again, this vlog is for you. Trolling can be an answer when the casting bite is tough. And I'll kind of go through these a little bit faster, but you know, if you want to cover water quickly, Try trolling, okay? Um, and this is not just a uh, when the shallow bite is slow thing because you can troll in shallow water. We're gonna talk about that a little bit today, okay? So it's not just a, hey, when the shallow bite's uh, dead, go deep and go troll. Well, you can troll shallow too, so it's not always about that, okay? Um, we, we, again, um, when you, uh, you know, when you wanna troll quickly, I talked about that, and I, I guess I was looking at this other tech, I'm like, what did I write there? Oh. When you want to learn your water quickly, how about that? Now, a lot of folks don't mention that, and we're talking trolling basics. When you're on new water, let's say, I've, I, I have a lot of clients and friends text me all the time, hey, we just bought a property on so-and-so lake, what should we do? Go trolling. Go trolling. Trolling allows you to learn your water quickly, and of course, catch fish in the process. Um, another reason why troll, when your bait or your muskies, and this is like an electronics thing, when you can tell they're suspended over open water. Now, can you catch them casting? Yes, you can. But trolling a lot of times offers you a, an edge on that sort of, that sort of uh, situation, okay? Um, when muskies are deeper, now this is a real reason why you troll, when muskies are holding deeper than the running depth that you will get out of a conventional casting scenario, AKA when your lures don't run deep enough. Now we're talking about, you know, usually diving lures, but even, you know, jigs and things like that, like big soft plastic lures, um, you know, unless you're vertical jigging, you know, it takes a long time for you to get your lure down to the strike zone. Trolling can be a, a pretty effective way uh, to get there. And of course, the last thing I'll say is this, it keeps your lure in the strike zone for a prolonged, a very long period of time. Now, we'll talk about this at some part, but you do want to actually, you know, check your lure every once in a while. You don't want to just troll for five hours or 10 hours and never never check your, your weapon there, never check your diving crankbait or your spinnerbait because it could be snagged and that, that can be a big problem. But uh, so, so that, you know, that's a little bit of the theory, if, if any of those questions or those thoughts spurred within you uh, some interest, then I think this is for you. And here's another kind of, um, as, as we say, I don't know, in the world of, uh, you know, uh, academia, this would be like uh, stopping something from entering the marketplace. Like what would stop you from entering trolling? Well, a lot of folks say, well, I probably need a lot of fancy gear. To, to do trolling for muskies or trolling for any species. And the answer to that is a big, fat, capitalized, underlined, italicized N-O for no. You really don't need anything except for the gear that you've been casting with. So please don't let that be a, that's the term I was looking for, barrier to entry. It's an economics term, okay? Uh, 
So just one rod, one reel, your line and your lure, okay? Now you need to check your local regulations to see uh, the number of lures that you can legally troll individually and per boat, because that varies. But again, you don't need a lot of fancy gear. You can, I'm not gonna do a plug for any trolling rod holder related stuff. A lot of folks have heard me talk about this on uh, you know, podcasts and things like that, and I've probably mentioned a couple things, but just go on Cabela's or Amazon or Bass Pro Shops or, or go to your local tackle de dealer, support local business, and just get some trolling setups, okay? When, especially, again, because this is called basics, it doesn't matter what you start with. Okay, so we are going to, and then, and then of course, you know, do, do I need a rod holder? Well, again, the answer is no, you don't. And today in this vlog, as we dive in here, even though we're already about 10 minutes in and I haven't quite talked about, but again, this is all important, at least for me as an educator, this is all important stuff to talk about. Um, you know, do you troll with a rod holder or you just hold the rod? Well, if you're asking me, and I guess if you're, if you're tuning into this uh, vlog, you probably want to know my take on this. So thank you. I, uh, you know, because I, I troll in, in Vialis and Oneida County of Northeast Wisconsin in the Eagle River area, my local regulations state that I am allowed one lure per person in the boat with a max of three. So when you see videos of me trolling, I'm usually doing what I call flatline trolling. Flatline trolling is when you are literally just holding the rod. I don't a lot of times, because I'm running one lure, use planer boards, okay? Um, I do use uh, rod holders from time to time when I got multiple folks in the boat, but we can talk about that as we go. But again, this is trolling basics. Flatline trolling, just holding the rod, is a very simple and highly effective way to troll. So I would highly recommend you take a look at that. So we're going to talk right now about how does it work? The basics. How does trolling work? Okay. And a lot of folks want to know, well, you know, I just, I don't get it. You know, how, what are, what are the, what are, you know, what are these things and how does it work? Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'm going to try something different here. I'm going to take my bullet pointed list. I'm going to make it into a triangle. Okay. So we've got three things for how does it work? And this is an important question, obviously, when we're talking about a new tactic, what are the basics of how does it work? Okay, so let's make a triangle. First of all, it, trolling revolves around basically three fundamental things, okay? That first one is amount of line, okay? That's number one, okay? Two, okay, is line diameter, okay? And, you know, this doesn't need to be very complex, okay? And, you know, the third thing is this, okay? It's the uh, boat speed. How fast are you going, okay? And I'm going to erase this in just a second. But th this is kind of the trifecta of understanding trolling. No matter how complicated you get with it or how basic you get with it. And again, remember now, this is just trolling basics. It's important to just take a very fundamental look at how trolling works. And it's really a function of three things. Amount of line out. This is the amount of line, I, I would generally say from the uh, tip of the rod. So this is tip of, that's a little too close there. Um, tip of the rod to the leader and lure, okay? Tip of the rod to the leader and the lure, okay? Um, and we'll just go right over here to line diameter. This is an important thing because, and again, we'll, I'll, I, I, will, I will add some things in before I move on from, you know, the, the amount of line, okay? Let's just say this. When you have more line, more line out, that equates to, we say, uh, you know, deeper uh, running depth. Okay, so more line, deeper running, deeper running depth. Less, less line equals um, shallow, shallow running depth. Okay, and those are those are important. I'll try to highlight those with a couple things. So more line means you run deep. Less line means you run shallow. Those are the basics when we're talking about amount of line. Okay, and this. Uh, really 
is is you know a, a truth for any lure. It doesn't matter if you're trolling shallow running crankbaits. And again, I'm talking about crankbaits. We will talk a little bit today about trolling blades and spinner baits or bucktails or booker tails, whatever you want to call it, okay? And of course, you know my favorite crankbait for trolling, especially in the late fall period, the depth raider. Joanna depth raiders are my all-time fave. Okay, but the more line, the deeper they run, the less line, the shallower they run. And what about line diameter, okay? How does this work? Well, um, thicker diameter, thicker diameter, probably don't need to say diameter because we've already, we've already discussed it there, but thicker diameter would mean shallow. Whoops, shallow. And uh, thin means deeper, okay? And this is, this is kind of important because if you're having, you know, if you're running a 120 pound test uh, super line and you're, and you're like just not attaining the depth that you want is in you're running too shallow, well, you've probably got too thick of a, a diameter, okay? Or if you're running a very thin line, and, and I do this on a lot of my casting setups when I want to when I want to get uh, more depth out of a, a out of a uh, you know a, a shallow or a shallow rater or a baby depth rater, I'll run a thinner diameter line. And maybe I'll just put this in the middle for you. That my if you're to ask me like Chaz, what is the line that you're trolling with? Okay, that would be this. Okay, J B O Beast Braid. Okay. And, you know, you're going to say, oh, yeah, well, that's a plug for JBO. Well, yeah, it is, whatever. I mean, I, I was involved in prototyping this line. Uh, I, I tested a lot of different types. Very, um, you know, flattered to have said that, you know, it, very, very honored, I should say, that I was involved in prototyping this brand of line for Joe Booker Outdoors. But Beast Braid, uh, and I've caught my, my personal best, all of my personal best muskies I've caught on this line. So if anybody ever asks, well, is it any good? I think it is. Some other folks will say, you know, whatever they want to say about it, but I think it's got a pretty good reputation, okay? So, and then I troll with what, I, I troll and cast primarily with 80 pound test, which has um, 18 pound test diameter, okay? And this is di diameter, didn't spell that right, but that's okay, you get the point, okay? 18.18 18 pound test diameter. So. That's the beauty of our, of our uh, you know, super lines these days is that we're able to get you know, immense, and I'm talking really immense strength, zero stretch with a fishing line that is super thin. I mean, this is 18 pound test diameter in the monofilament world, but yet in the super rig world, it equates to 80 pound test, okay? So that's the third thing. So we've got, we've got a mono line out, we've got the, uh, the diameter of line. So this is my standard, if you will. Okay, and then boat speed, okay? And this is, again, I'm, I'm just gonna give you the, the basics here because this is called trolling basics, right? Boat speed, faster means um, deeper. Okay, running depth, faster means deeper. Slower, and if you're watching this, of course, uh, well, not of course, if this is you know a year from now or six months from now, it's not gonna be during the late fall period. But during the late fall period, I'm gonna put a little asterisk by this slower means not, well, I shouldn't, well, this is a generality, okay? Faster run, faster speed in combination with certain amounts of line. Faster will generally mean deeper, slower will mean shallow, okay? Now, I do wanna say something about this because if you run, so let's say you want to, so there, there's different ways to, to do this, okay? So for example, I'm gonna delete this all for a second or erase this because it's important as I want to talk about this faster means deeper and slower means shallower okay because I was just about to say you know if you're watching this now and you're saying hey Chaz I almost said Mr. Martin I almost entered the teaching realm there at least for any of my students uh, watching this um, you could still call me Mr. Martin if you want uh, but you know if you're saying hey man I, I'm, I'm trying to gain a little bit out of this and it's late fall so I do want to talk to you um, I'm going to uh, put this, I'm gonna display this right about, see if I can time this now, on the corner of the screen. This is a screenshot taken from uh, the Joe Booker Muskie 360 um, Muskie app, if you will. And this is a depth chart for running depth and, and amounts of line out, okay? When you're seeing a chart like this, you've gotta be asking yourself a variety of different questions. So I believe these charts are made for 80 pound test, roughly give or take, okay? 
And it says on the on the app anywhere from two and a half to four miles an hour. So you got to split the difference there and say let's just let's just assume that these charts are kind of created with the idea that you're going to be running three miles per hour for speed. Okay, three mph. Okay, and I wanted to say this. Okay, that at three miles per hour. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna now, I, I think my, sometimes my uh, results vary with this. So I wanna, I wanna talk about this first of all. When you're looking at these trolling depth charts, okay? This is really, I'm, I'm going off script. This is, I'm totally kind of talking out of the blue here. Uh, not out of the blue, but I'm, I'm, I'm going off script and I'm saying this, like, cause I'm looking at this chart and I'm saying, well, boy, uh, 75 feet gets me 12 feet down. It's all a function of the speed. So if you've got your line diameter set at 80, pound test or 18 pound test diameter, then you start messing with the other two parts, the speed and the amount of line out, okay? So actually I'll make, I'll make a quick chart here, okay? And just make, make my point clear about uh, fall trolling because I haven't quite gotten to what I was trying to, to make clear. So we'll talk about um, speed, boat speed, and distance of line. So Line distance, okay? And I'm just going to say, okay, based on this chart, okay, we're going to have at three MPH, okay, so three miles per hour with a line distance of 12 feet, which I, I agree with this. I'm not saying I don't agree with this, okay? With a line distance of 12 feet, okay, you are going to have a running depth depth, okay, of approximately, according to this chart, 75 feet, okay? So, oh my gosh, I totally messed that up. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, line distance, now I'm, now I'm blushing, but that's okay. Sometimes we make mistakes, and now you're like, whoa, that didn't make any sense as I wonder this. Okay, line distance, 75 feet of line gets you a running depth of 12 feet. You're probably wondering if I'm gonna edit that, but no, it's important. We're not perfect. Sometimes you make mistakes with this stuff, but it doesn't matter. We're getting to the point here, okay? The point is this, three miles per hour, 75 feet of line, you're running a, and this is, by the way, you're probably like, well, what lure is this? This is for a jointed depth rater, okay? Eight inch, okay? Because that's primarily what I'm trolling in the fall, so I'm gonna do it for my preferred lure of choice here, okay? Three miles per hour, 75 feet, 12 feet of line. Now, if this is where you think your muskies are, at 12 feet, okay? But I'm telling you right now that in the fall, you ought to troll slow, okay? How slow? Well, that's up to you. You can try, you can try two miles per hour, or you can try one miles per hour, or one mile per hour, or you can, you can try just straight up pausing and stopping every once in a while. You can vary it from three to two to one and a half to, you know, what am I gonna do? I'm, I like to vary it, okay? So, but what I'm gonna try to show you here is this, how this is a fluid system. The triangular system is fluid, okay? And if you change now to two miles per hour and you wanna hit a running depth of 12 feet, okay? What are you going to do here? This is like a, a you know a question in math in math class. What are you going to do there? It's not on the chart. I don't know, Chaz. What am I going to do? You've got this. Is where you've got to go out and bring it. And I'm telling you seriously, bring your phone, your smartphone, or a notebook with you. When I was younger, I used to bring a notebook out and chart all this out. You know why? Because Joe Booker told me to do it, and I listened to him. Okay, um, and he's the guy that invented the darn lure, so I listened to the guy. Uh, how are you going to figure out this line distance to get 12 foot of running depth? Let's say I'm in the fall period here. I want to slow things down because cold, cold water means go slow. You've got to go and experiment. I can give you a ballpark idea here. I might tell you this is between 85 and, you know, I'll, I'm going to just say 85 feet, okay? That might, that might be about right there, I think. Okay, if you're running 85 feet at two miles per hour, you're gonna get 12 foot of, uh, you know, running depth. If you're running 75 feet at three, you're gonna get 12, okay? If you're running 60 foot at four, you might get 12. So you can see how this varies. You can, you can vary your speed and your line distance, but still, still 
get the same running depth out of your lures. And that's a really important concept to, to kind of dive into uh, today as you or whenever you're whenever you're watching this uh, podcast is that you know th this is a fluid system and that's and that's part of what makes this so uh, beautiful is that no matter where you where you're fishing from you know Ontario to Kentucky to Wisconsin Minnesota you know whatever these numbers are going to stay pretty consistent okay and it's something that you need to look into. So now, you know, we've, we've kind of touched on that, kind of the trifecta of information here of how does it work, okay? We're going to talk about the next pretty important topic here as we kind of dive in. I'm sorry, by the way, I always feel guilty as a, as a professional educator, aka a teacher, if I made a mistake on the board, which, hey, it happens. I feel like I've, I've uh, you know, destroyed your mind or something, but I think you'll be fine. Um, Okay, so the next thing is, uh, you know, the strategy, okay? And I'm just gonna write that right here. The strategy, okay? And this is very simple. This, this is a, a uh, you know, this is kind of a golden rule when it comes to hunting predators, um, is find, forage, find, predator. It's very simple. Find the food, find the muskies. This will probably, I hope, <laughs> remain a, a theme in muskie fishing uh, long after I'm gone and throughout my life. And you know, if you're trying to find the predator, you have to find the food that it's eating. Now, I mean, again, I've just found this to be a pretty consistent thing that's helped me become consistent in boating fish. Now, how does this relate to trolling, okay? Well, once you locate the bait fish, okay? Once you locate the, what you are thinking, um, and a lot of times, again, this, you can do some research online, you can do some research by talking to actual scientists like Jordan Weeks, doing a little name dropping here. You can talk to folks that are, that are fisheries biologists, you can read publications, you can read articles on Muskie 360 or Muskie Hunter or whatever, you, wherever you wanna read, you can read great articles. Um, but the idea is that you're locating the bait fish either on your, on your electronics or their presumed location. A lot of times, maybe you're not fishing with electronics, or maybe you've got electronics and you're not quite sure how to use them, which will be another, uh, you know, another vlog for another day, okay? But the idea is that you're going to run your lure, and I'll just write this because it's in my notes, okay? You're going to run the lure around the fish, and that's kind of as we talk about strategy, that's the basic idea here, is this again, as I remind myself, this is trolling basics, okay? Run, lure, run the lure around the forage or around the muskies. Run your lures, run your lure around the forage, okay? And that's really the key. Now, you're, again, you're talking, well, this doesn't sound very complicated, Jazz. I guess I'm surprised I haven't ever tried trolling. Well, good. I hope that you're, see I hope you're seeing that this really isn't a very complicated thing, okay? Um, the most complicated part of this whole puzzle is really building your confidence, really showing yourself for you, for you, that you can do this and that you can catch fish doing this. It's, it's easy to watch somebody do it on YouTube or, or on, you know, you know, Dish Network. It's harder to go out and do it yourself and be confident in it. So we'll talk about that at the very end. But this is the big idea. Run your lures around the forage or around the predators, either way. But a lot of times it's difficult. And again, the more time you spend in the water, the more time you see these on your electronics, the muskies, these. But you more so are seeing the forage, okay? And that's easiest to see because there's more of it than there are muskies generally. Well, not generally speaking, there just are, scientifically speaking, there's more forage than there are predators. Therefore, it's easier to use that as a gauge of where to run your lure, okay? So, um, again, the basic idea here, there's there's like three ideas. You can, you can go above, uh, this is, I'm not doing a Dr. Seuss, above, uh, at level, at level or um, below, um, and, and you know again, this is some some basic just the basics here above at level or below. But a lot, but the basics you'd be surprised what the basics can get you. Okay, 
And, and I would say that if, if, you know, where is your money? Where is your money here for targeting fish? More often than not, you know, this is probably going to be where you want to be when it comes to trolling. Either above the muskies or the bait or at level. Trolling below the fish, just speaking scientifically, um, you know, the muskies' eyeballs are, are positioned here. Uh, and let's let's actually bring down one of uh, one of these amazing magnets here. You know, look at this. Now again, the muskies can feel things with their lateral line. You know, I you know I would assume three dimensionally around them. But again, you know they are positioned here. These eyeballs. Again, now these now you know this is um, the way that they're positioned around the face. I'm just going to assume it's it's something like this. Okay, if you were to kind of a you know assume, and again this is just. Um, my, and I would love for you, by the way, if there's a scientist in the audience and you want to hop on for a joint podcast and talk about this, let's do it. But this is what I'm thinking about when I'm thinking about musky strike zone, okay? This is strike zone, okay? And what I generally might think, now this is not all the time true. This is a generality to prove a point, okay? This is a generality to prove a point that some something like this, not necessarily, could be a dead zone and something, well, not over here, but, you know, if, you know, I'm just saying, I'm just making the point that, you know, trolling below fish, which is a common problem, you know, especially when you're trolling and folks want to troll in open water, is they're trolling too deep. That is a problem that I see amongst folks that get into trolling, they're new to trolling, okay? They troll too deep. You can actually, you'd be in better shape by trolling above the muskies, I think, in my humble opinion, than you would be by trolling below them. Just from the standpoint that the muskies' eyes are positioned at the top of their head, I think they are most likely going to hit things that are at least at level with them, or close to, or above. If you're way below a muskie, I think you have a far less likelihood of catching that fish or attracting it all. Maybe, I don't know, I don't, it's certainly not zero because we know in the, the world of musky fishing, anything is is uh, is fair, okay? And um, so that's the, that's the idea. I would generally try to, again, look for, to find your forage depth. I'll draw a little picture of this here and run your lures at that depth. So let's, let's get serious here and draw a quick, a quick picture. And I know I'm kind of running out of time um, and a lot of folks, no, you're not running out of time. No, I am. I can't, I can't do a, a, a vlog for an hour. And I've got to eat dinner. Stephanie's uh, kindly waiting for me in the other, other room here. And she wants to eat dinner, so I've got to get moving here. Uh, but let's draw a little bit of a diagram. So let's say here I am trolling, okay? And I've been, and you know, you know, part of the strategy is, well, how do you know where the bait fish are? Well, first of all, you can know by just going out and trolling, right? You can also know by driving around, driving around and actually looking with your electronics for the bait fish, okay? Um, so I'm going to try to do my, my kind of three-dimensional. So here's, uh, let's see if I can do this, okay? We kind of did this pretty well last time where we've got some kind of shoreline here. And this is, you know, our, this is our three, 3D imaging here, okay, and we've got, um, oh, let's just say this is 10 foot. We've got 15 feet, and it, it breaks, breaks further, okay? Breaks further, and let's say that with our electronics, and this is what I was seeing last weekend, I saw a lot of Cisco staging, and those of you who messaged me on, um, you know, social media, I, I confirmed for you. I mean, yeah, this is what I was seeing. I was seeing a lot of Cisco's and other types of bait fish staging in, in monstrous schools at, you know, anywhere between 12 and 16 feet of water, okay? And again, it becomes very, very easy to do, guys. I'm, you know, that's why this is trolling basics. It's also meant to be a motivational thing for you. Is here's your here's your boat, okay? Here's my little 680 Tiller Ranger, okay? And the idea is this: I know that these muskies are somewhere around 
these schools of Cisco's, okay? They might be here at the 15, 15, 16 foot mark. I know they are, and I know that there are some fish up here at the 10 foot mark. And I also know that there's definitely some fish here at the 12 foot mark as we look about, you know, mileage of, of shoreline to be covered, right? Where are these muskies? And I know that there's some that are up shallow, right? You know, you're going to say, are there any up shallow in those weeds? And I'll say, yeah, there are. There's definitely some that are up shallow in those weeds. But again, right now, we're not targeting them. We're talking about trolling, right? So how do we access these fish? Again, this goes down to your three, three important things I talked about here. Speed, um, distance of line, and diameter. Okay? And here's the idea, you know, if I want to target this fish, this fish, excuse me, that's at 12 feet, okay? I'm going to run at a speed. So according to my chart by Joe Booker, out by, you know, my Muskie 360, here's, here is the uh, real deal here. If I'm running, okay, I'm going to put this in different colors. How to do this now, okay? If I am running at three miles per hour, and I want to hit, um, and again, I'm going to have my diameter of 18 um, pound test and my, my distance of line. I want to hit this. I'm going to say this is uh, 12 foot. Okay. Actually, I should use a different color there. I want to hit 12 feet. Okay. So 12 foot in my distance here by this calculator says 75 foot of line. Okay. So 75 feet of 80 pound test piece break is going to put my jointed depth rater, let's see if I can draw a jointed depth rater here. Something like that, okay? And uh, there's my jointed depth, there's my lure, okay? And if I stay at this, this speed, okay, my lure is going to run at this level for a very prolonged period of time, okay? And that's the idea. Now, how do you, now if you're not catching fish doing that, what do you do? Troll shallow? Troll deep, troll in between. Just keep experimenting. It's that just experiment. It's the same thing you do with casting. You must experiment, okay? You must experiment, okay? Now, what I'm talking about experiment here, jointed versus straight. Rattles, no rattles, okay? If you're trolling um, shallow, okay? Now, we didn't really get into this, and this might be a, a topic for another vlog. It really needs to be at this point. Um, but if you're trolling spinnerbaits, uh, you know, over and around very snaggy cover. Are you trolling double blades or single blades? Big ones or small ones? How much line do you use for trolling spinnerbaits? But we'll keep this pretty simple. We'll keep this with the basics of diving crankbaits. Okay. Um, and, you know, this, this, you can just follow this general idea and that, okay, if this was what was happening, um, you know, let's say on Saturday and you and your, your fishing partner go out there and all of a sudden, um, you know, you see, uh, you see this, okay? All of a sudden, this is what I'm talking about about using your electronics. You go out the next day and all of a sudden you see this, okay? Whoa, hey, all the bait is up really shallow for some reason. And all these muskies did was this, okay? They move like this, okay? And if you're trolling your lure down here, well, guess what? That's now the dead zone. So what you did one day does not as we very much know in this sport, not equate to success the next day. Everything change. Everything changes overnight, okay? So you're always got, you've always got to be experimenting with this whole thing, okay? Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about, and this is really going to be uh, fairly short here, okay? So I apologize. If you, if you want more on this, we'll go further in detail on this, okay? But is a, is a tactical thing, okay? Last thing I'm going to talk about is tactical. Okay, we're going to take our depth rater and we're going to do two things with it, okay? Basically, when it comes to trolling crankbaits, there are two, and I guess, again, like I said, we can, if you have more questions on this, I may do another another uh, vlog on this if you, uh, if you folks ask me questions, okay? So ask me questions. I like the questions, okay? You've got basically... Two, when it comes to tactics, okay? You've got run clean, like that, run clean. And you've got what's called uh, run tight, which a lot of times I call 
bottom um, seam. Okay, when you are running clean, your lure is suspended off the bottom, so you are off the bottom, okay? And you are at a particular depth. I usually equate this to, um, you know, where the bait fish are. So, so whatever depth the bait fish are holding, that's, uh, especially when you're running over what we call open water, when you're over the basin. So bait fish, I'm gonna say basin, and this is not all the time, but this is what sometimes what I equate this to. When I'm running tight and, I'm, and I wanna get real close to the cover, I'm gonna do what's called bottom bouncing. And my lure is making actual contact with the bottom, okay? Does this include hats, boots, fish cribs, buoys, wood, logs, dead fish, walleye harnesses, uh, walleye jigs, walleye fishing line, musky fishing line? Oh yeah, that includes all of that when you're bottom bouncing. Oh yeah, believe me, I am actually cleaning the waters of Oneida and Violas County every time I go trolling. I troll up and I catch all kinds of junk, but we also catch muskies. So another tactic that you'll want to read up on, I have written some articles on bottom bouncing. If you're interested in getting one of these articles, email me or leave it in the, you know, email me or leave me your email and I will send you a copy of one of my articles that goes into detail on bottom bouncing. So I'm really looking at those two tactics, either running clean or, or running uh, tight to the cover. Both can be very effective. And again, this really comes down to this whole idea here as we look at the, you know, basics of trolling. Experiment, 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 okay? And I'm going to leave you with one, you know, last thing, if you will, one last idea, and that's this. If you haven't gotten into trolling because uh, you just haven't had the confidence or you haven't had the positive reinforcement with catches, I'm challenging all of you that fall into this category right now because guess what? I was in that category too. And many days I fall into that category because when you're not catching fish, your confidence wanes. Your confidence can, can go out the window pretty quickly. But my, my uh, challenge to you is this. Use this video on trolling basics to kickstart your trolling career. I challenge you this fall, if you're still fishing, to do some trolling, especially when it's cold. And if not, if your boat is winterized and it's in the garage for the season, I challenge you to employ trolling as a tactic next year. And as, and as I've answered some questions uh, on, on the podcast here and there, you know, the, the big thing is to develop your confidence in this. And you will not develop confidence in anything in life if you don't practice it. If, if somebody were to say to me, for example, well, how'd you get good at at putting for golf, I practiced. How'd you get good at shooting free throws? I practiced. How'd you get good at making sandwiches? I practiced, okay? You, you, if you don't practice it, you're not gonna get any good at it. So if you're, if you're not trolling because you haven't had, had um, success, you've got to put in the time, okay? And I'm not talking if you're out there casting for 10 hours to do one hour trolling, 10 hours casting. How about you try five and five? Or how about you try three hours casting, seven hours trolling, try that. You might just be surprised that your catch rates start to go up. Use the depth charts, use me as a resource, hire me as a guide, hire me for 2021 or whatever year you're watching this. Give me a, give me a ring, shoot me an email, I'll teach you how to troll. It's really a neat uh, you know, tactic for musky fishing and uh, I really hope you, that you have enjoyed this vlog and please leave your comments down below. Uh, shoot me an email. Sometimes I'm a little behind on emails right now during the teaching part of my year, but I'll get back to you at some point. So anyway, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope you enjoyed this 40 plus minute vlog. I know I did. Um, I feel like I'm back in the classroom. I love the educational part of this stuff and I really hope you got something out of this. So anyway, Thank you. Uh, I, I couldn't do it without you folks. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.